Hi, this is Deltina Hay, author of the Bootstrapper's Guide to the Mobile Web, and welcome to class. This class is entitled Marketing Mobile Apps for Top Visibility and Lasting Success, and that's exactly what I'm going to help you achieve. In this session, we're going to talk about the goals of a class, how the class is generally organized, as well as talk a little bit about the phases that we're going to go through to develop your marketing plan. The goals of a class are to get early and ongoing exposure for your app, to optimize your app for the app stores and for everywhere else on the internet that you're representing it, to create buzz and draw attention to your app, to specifically reach your target audience or target market, to establish a significant audience, to build an advocate base from that audience, and then to maintain momentum well beyond your app's launch date. You want to be thinking market early and market often. I found this infographic on App Promo that talks about how developers who spent a lot of money on marketing were much more successful than those who didn't. Well, I would like to change this if you spend it, they will come to if you market, they will come because you can get similar results by investing the time into your marketing campaign and knowing how to spend that time is especially important. Now one point I want to make very early on is that search optimization does not equal marketing. It's important to know the difference between mobile app search optimization and mobile app marketing. Most articles written on mobile app marketing are about getting good placement in the app stores. Certainly getting good exposure in the app stores is important, but it's not marketing. It's search optimization. Now we discuss many tactics for optimizing your app for good placement in the app stores, but we focus more on early and ongoing marketing efforts to increase your app's exposure to your target audience, get reviews and media attention, and establish a mobile app marketing plan for long-term success. Now there are no quick fixes here. Slow and steady wins the race. So how do we do this? The approach is to recognize that the mobile app landscape is a lot like that of the book industry. I've been in the publishing industry a long time, and I've also published apps and ebooks. If authors only relied on Amazon placement to sell their books, they would be in a world of hurt. The goals are very similar. Let's take a look at them. You want to get your app or your book in front of as many people as possible. Users or readers, reviewers, bloggers, and the media. Because you know that once they use your app or read your book, they will love it and ultimately become a fan and recommend your app or your book to their network. I've taken the best tactics for marketing and optimizing mobile apps and melded them with time-honored book marketing strategies. The result is a mobile app marketing plan that will leave your competitors in the dust. Let's talk a little bit about how the class is organized. The class is taught as a lecture-based course with examples pulled from real-world marketing plans. Tips and advice from other app developers and marketers are often incorporated into the lectures. And instructional screencasts and supplemental videos are also included where applicable. Now there's also plenty of supplemental material. All the resources I mentioned in the lectures are referenced in the discussions. There are also samples and templates you can use for your media kit, query letters, and press releases. So I'm sure you're wondering at this point why my slides are so text heavy. Well there really is a reason for that, a couple actually. First of all, not all my students are native English speakers. And some of them may be hard of hearing. Most of the lecture material is repeated in the body of the slides to accommodate these students. But this method also makes it much easier for you to revisit portions of a lecture at a later time. I learned this from teaching the social media certificate class at Drury University. My students say they just love how I have all of my text on my slides because they can run through the lectures very quickly looking at the text on the screen and then stop exactly when they need to to continue listening to clarify things. So now let's look at the process. We're going to discuss developing your mobile marketing plan in several phases. This is a formula that works well for marketing books and will work equally well for marketing your app. The plan is based on an organic and holistic approach to marketing. First, there's the long lead time phase. This phase begins four to six months before your launch date. I know this seems extreme, but the more lead time you give the media, reviewers, bloggers, beta testers, and supporters, the better chance your app has of getting hype before, during, and after launch time. We discuss preparing quality media kits and query letters to present to the media, to reviewers, and to bloggers, and how to write and prepare press releases. We also discuss establishing your online presence and building your support network, both of which also require a lot of lead time. And then there's the pre-launch phase. This phase begins 30 days before your launch. In this phase, we focus on finalizing your marketing materials, your app assets, and your app website. We discuss beefing up your social media efforts and creating anticipation for your app release. We also discuss optimizing your app store submissions and creating great screenshots and videos. 
Finally, the launch time phase. This phase begins one week before you launch. This phase is about creating buzz. We discuss what's called a burst campaign and how they can help your app rise in the ranks in the app stores. We also discuss going local with your campaign and encouraging reviews and ratings from your app users. Now you notice how small this phase seems compared to our long lead phase and even to our pre-launch phase. That's because we have already done most of the work. This is your secret weapon, learning how to have very long lead times in your marketing before you release your app. At this stage, your competitors are scrambling. I guarantee it. They're saying, oh my gosh, now my app is done and I'm exhausted and I put all this time and effort into developing. And then they put it on the app store and they expect people to find it. And guess what? There are millions of apps out there now and that just isn't going to happen. But you are going to be in a beautiful position to say, hey, I've done the work. Yeah, I worked my tail off to get there and I can sit back and relax. So now the post-launch phase. And I don't want you to relax too much here because this phase is about momentum. I call this the in it for the long haul phase. Now if all you want is a mobile app that you burst out there and expect to get a lot of sales and in the store you move on, that's one thing. But if you want an app that's going to have lasting success and you plan to commit to that success, then you cannot let up on your momentum. You want to keep your marketing efforts up throughout the entire life of the app. In this phase we talk about establishing your ongoing marketing plan and finding new ways to market. And in the last chapter, we discuss additional marketing tactics like launching mobile ad campaigns as well as methods for tracking your success. So what are our class mantras? Market early and market often. And slow and steady wins the race. But the race has to begin sometime. So let's get moving.